Hello YouTube, I'm Philip Preppers. So I'm doing Prepper Pro Paris hosting of the Prepper Challenge. I'll leave a link to her channel here. If you haven't already subscribed to this lady's channel, then please check her out. She does some great stuff. Now I've decided to take part in the challenge which is lights out, 24 hours off the grid. So what is in front of you is my preparation and I'll take you through and show you the reps to the preps. Now the advantage obviously to taking part in a simulated grid down is that you know when it's going to happen. Um, obviously you don't know when the grid's going to go down beforehand but there are some things I'm going to show you when the grid actually does go down and I'll just t take you through them as we go. You're going to have some perishable food so I've got fruit here, got some bread there now what I do is I just get food when I'm going to eat it. So there's a couple of reasons for this. The way that you dispose of waste is going to change. Now if you have a massive supply of food which is in packaging, the last thing that you want to do is to conduct your normal waste disposal operations and potentially give the game away. So that's one of the reasons why I only get things to eat when I'm, when I'm going to eat them. Uh, the other reason is it, just in case the grid goes down um, I don't want perishables going off I don't want a big massive supply of perishables going to waste obviously when the grid goes down your perishables are going to be the first thing that gets consumed because they have a short life. So anyways for the challenge I'm just going to keep it real simple with what I'm eating I'm just going to have pasta and I bought myself a big 5 kilogram bag of rice. For water, I already have stores of water on site um, and I recently checked them. But what you will want to do is you'll want to make sure that any containers that you take on walks that you fill them up. I have a lifesaver bottle here which I keep filled up. It's been a while since I checked the water on that, so as part of the preparation for the challenge, I'm gonna I'm gonna drink this water, and I'm just gonna give the lifesaver bottle a maintenance check, and then I'm just gonna refill it. This is a backup to the main source that I'm gonna be taking my water from, and I'll take you through that in a minute. I'm going to back to basics with food, and it's only for 24 hours, but any supplements you might want to get some supplements. The only really su real supplement that I take at the minute is boron. Um, there are other things that you'll want to have though in case of a grid down and that's some colloidal silver. This will help with any uh, viral outbreaks. It'll also uh, it'll just basically give you an extra layer of protection from you know microbial infections, viral infections. The other thing I do is with my water I take some apple cider vinegar here. You know, you're not going to live off this, but I have it in my water every day anyways, so you know, that's not going to change on a grid down. A couple of other things, part of my preparations, I have a total dissolved solids meter there. I can basically see how many parts per million of any uh, contaminants, particles are in water from if I need to go to a different source to get it, I'm just going to use this as a indication of how much filtering I'm going to do beforehand. I've got the water straw. This is something I'd recommend or some system like this such as the Soya Mini. Have one of these per person in your bugging location or if you're bugging out. Make sure every single individual has a personal water filtration system. Here is my H2 Go bag. This is inspired from the Urban Prepper. I'll leave a link to his channel here. It's pretty much everything that he has in his H2 Go bag. Um, if I do need a bug out, I'll make sure that I have this in a location I can easily grab it. In here is everything I need to make water safe. Now obviously this isn't going to matter too much as I'm bugging in for this challenge but 
make sure that anything that you have to fill uh, the essentials uh, such as air and water you have those to hand uh, you've checked them and they're ready to go so prepper Popery said that we're not allowed to take water from the mains during the during the challenge so this goes a little bit further though because obviously the other thing that runs on electricity is gas so I'm going to be using these coupled with the Van Gogh and you can see here from a previous challenge I was making pots of tea 800 milliliters of water every every brew I did I just did a, a tally here uh, it ended up that this canister did 21 and a half brews see here this is a new canister it doesn't have a tally on it because it's full obviously if you're using any sort of flame in a bug in situation make sure that you have proper safety measures don't use it in an area where there's any sort of flammables so even though you're cooker you can't use it because the grid's down just put use the actual oven stove itself um, what I usually do is I'll either clear this area here completely make sure there's nothing you know that's going to catch fire above uh, and around the area and then I'll put it on a stand here just in case obviously if you have younger children um, in the property and you're bugging just make sure that they can't reach it so think carefully about where you're going to place things like this if you cook a, if you can put a nice flat surface over your cooker rings if you keep your cooking activity even a grid down restricted to that area then people are going to know to be careful around there another thing to consider obviously when the grid goes down you're not using normal appliances is if you're going to use alternatives make sure you have a system of extinguishing it and you have proper protocols um, and measures in place and that young and old everyone knows what to do in an emergency and the necessary drills have been done beforehand so that everyone knows who's attending in your bugging during the lights out or grid down alright so I mentioned earlier about filling up containers uh, any bottles that you use for hiking with water when the grid goes down but it's very important because mo a lot of people if the grid goes down and they fill up containers or they fill up their bathtub there's several there's a couple of things to consider before the grid goes down there may have been problems with the filtration and purification of the water it is a good idea to get things fill them up with water because you definitely that's one thing that you're gonna want to get whilst it's still flowing from the tap if you already have a filtration system such as a lifesaver bottle or the lifesaver jerry can make sure that you put the water from the utility supply into your filtration and purification system first then you've already eliminated a big potential source of illness which then escalates your problems even further the extra care that you take at the beginning is going to save you from further harm and disruption and potential death further down the road the main system which I'm going to use is my gravity filter and I'll show you that now alright guys so in preparation for the grid going down obviously you, you wouldn't know in, if, in an actual grid down when it's going down but in preparation for this prepper challenge I've obviously filled up my gravity filter and it's filtering the water there and then basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up the pans and any other containers I mean this is only for 24 hours so I don't have to go absolutely nuts if the grid does go down just make sure to keep filling up your bath fill up your purification systems and your filtration systems with water basically until water stops coming out of the tap alright guys so the next set of preparations obviously when it gets dark I'm going to need some light so in my lights out challenge which I'll stick a card or a link here for I used some torches which I I'd got in preparation for stuff hits the fan or a grid down uh, obviously I'm just going to use the same kit but with, as with this prepper challenge for 24 hours I'm basically going to assume that all of the grid has gone down 
So I've got some communications and Intel as well that I'm going to use and basically I'm just got a radio here which I'm just going to keep running for the full durations of the challenge, the full 24 hours. It's important that things like this are obviously ready to go beforehand. Uh, I've got my mobile phone here as well in case I need to make contact with someone. There may still be a contingency uh, backup power to mobile masts at least for a limited period. Uh, here I have my solar power with extra batteries, cables, etc. in the back. And that's just the goal zero, which you've seen in my previous lights out challenge. A couple of other things to have on you in the emergency at all times is a wallet. Uh, in there I have spare cash, keys to the property, um, it's always in my pocket. Obviously it's not because I'm showing you it now, but I'm just putting it in my pocket now. <laughs> the TI3 through night I used in my lights out challenge, freaking excellent torch. And you can use it to light up small areas. Uh, it stands just like a candle. Uh, as a backup to all of the torches I used on the lights out challenge, I have my through night TN12. This is on my belt always. Last torch, and it, was, it actually started to become the main torch I used. For mobility and for lighting up rooms, the through night TH10. Also, in preparation before the challenge starts, I'm just recharging my 18650 cells. That cell on the left, the red one, is a cheapy Chinese cell. I basically, the only, the only torch I use that in is my uh, front cycle light. The only reason why I still use that is just for the bike light, basically. Any cell that you can get use out of is worth just making sure that it's topped up. The other thing I do in preparation for a grid down, stuff hits the fan situation as well, is I check my, my bug out bag. So you can see here on the left, that's my main bug out bag, which is a Rush 24. Next, which I keep on hand, is the next bag, which is my first aid supply bag. That's obviously separate to the first aid kits that I have. Everything that's in my IFAC or in any of my first aid kits, there's extras in that bag there. That's my bicycle. I've just used it this morning and I know that the water bladder is practically full. So if the grid was to actually go down, I wouldn't need to touch anything in that bag because I check it and maintain it very regularly. And this next bag here is one that I use mainly for walks. If I'm doing any sort of uh, long distance walk, I'll basically take this bag. It has a lot of survival um, emergency items in the, in the bottom there. And then in the main compartment I just change that depending on what I'm doing but as part of this challenge I'm just going to assume that the grid's down and obviously you know I mean the grid might actually go down during the challenge so I need to keep these to hand and ready to grab at a moment's notice so I've laid them all out I did check them recently within the last two weeks so I know that every single one of these is good to go and that's another thing to consider guys if you're in doubt at all about any of your preps then just do a prep check all right guys so basically that's pretty much it as far as the checks go and you know basically what i'm going to use what i'm going to check i probably won't use that lifesaver bottle but i will check it all right guys i hope you're taking part in the challenge too um give prepper potpourri a, a look she does some really great things and obviously you know Hats off to her for taking over the challenge from Armed Rogue, who's just had a little baby. See you in the next video, guys. Be safe, be prepared, and take part in the challenge if you can. Obviously, choose the duration that suits you, and let us know how you get on. See you soon.